everybody, and welcome to the RA facility here in Marshall, Minnesota, where the SMSU Mustangs are looking to take on the Minnesota State Mavericks. Hello, I'm Michael Sterling, along with Matt Callahan. And Matt, uh, Minnesota State comes in at 20 and 5 overall, 17 and 4 in conference play. SMSU, after losing a tough game last night to Concordia St. Paul, uh, now sit at 4 and 21 overall. 2-19 in conference play. We just learned that on Wednesday, the first uh, game of the conference tournament, they will be traveling to Northern State to take on Northern State. So uh, a tough few games still to come, but uh, at home tonight hosting their annual Pink Zone night and uh, the M Lady Mustangs looking for an upset. Taking a look at the, some of the stats. I know you've already gotten some stuff written down, but what do you think uh, will be big in this game? What do you think are some keys and some key players to watch out for in this game here tonight? Well, definitely the Lady Mustangs, the first key of the game is to uh, contain Allie Wilkinson. She is fifth in the NSIC in uh, points scored with 17.1 points average. Um, in every category, she's she's fifth as well in field goal percentage with 51%. Uh, I mean, this Allie Wilkinson can get after you pretty quick. She can hit her shot, she can get down low, she can shoot, and then she can steal as well. She is... Uh, fifth in the NSIC in uh, the turnover. I mean, stealing the ball. She got two. She got. She gets at least two steals per game. You got to make sure that you're not turning the ball over. Lady Mustangs have had trouble with that. To can uh, make sure that they're not turning over the ball because that was killer for them last night as well as shooting the ball, which leads me to taking better shots. The Lady Mustangs need to take better shots. There were a couple of times where we thought, why they ever threw that uh, ball up there in the. Uh, it was almost like air balls and just off the backboard. So the Lady Mustangs have to make better shot selections because it, it will it Ladies will hurt them against this South very West good Minnesota, Minnesota State, 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 State team here tonight. And then the third key of the game, they need to fast start. Last last game they had a really slow start against against Concordia St. Paul, and they didn't do their best to really uh, get after it offensively and defensively. So they need to shoot better. And uh, in order for them to get the upset, um, they need contributions from Allison Nagel. They need and Bree Holloman, Rebecca Rowling, Ellen Degler. Uh, she had a tough game as well. I mean, she's one of the best in the NSIC. Count it fourth in a field goal percentage with 52%. So they need they, all of the uh, seniors here are going to look to really play a strong game here tonight, Michael. And uh, Hopefully they can come out with the upset because uh, they they play after this game they play obviously on Wednesday against a very good Northern State team at Northern State on Wednesday so uh, the Lady Mustangs have a tall order against them here uh, coming up. Yeah, finishing uh, obviously the regular season here tonight Mustang against our ranked opponent nice in number 21 Minnesota State, but Northern State, the team they play in the first round of the conference tournament, also ranked at number 17. So a tough, uh, tough few games coming up. And you mentioned turnovers being a big like thing to in tonight's us. game. The Mustangs uh, looking at Mustang turnover basketball. margin, a big advantage Goal for Mustangs. the Mavericks. The Mustangs 13th in the conference in turnover margin uh, with a negative uh, 2.65. Uh, Minnesota State first in the conference in turnover margin with a plus six and a half turnover margin, which is pretty darn good. Lets you know that they like to get after it on defense and force turnovers, and that's something uh, that the Mustangs have really struggled with all season. Now taking a look at the Mavericks in detail. The Mavericks enter the final weekend of the regular season. Ranked number 21 in the NCAA Division II. Second place in the NSIC South Division behind a game behind Wayne State. Uh, the Mavericks are on an eight game winning streak dating back to January 24th in which the Mavericks outscoring their opponents 79 to 59 on average. They're led by Ali Wilkinson who as Matt mentioned uh, is averaging 18 points per game and rebounding about eight rebounds per game. Currently, Minnesota State's uh, near 80 points per game average in the NSIC ranks first in the 16-team conference. They also lead the NSIC in three-point field goal percentage defense, only allowing the other teams to shoot to nearly 25%. Offensive rebounding with the 15 per game, and like we said, turnover margin as well. Coach Emily TC enters her second season with the Mavericks as head coach. And uh, so uh, she's doing a pretty good job in her uh, short time with the 
Minnesota State here, Matt. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, 20-5 and five record, 11-1 and one at home especially, and 8-4 and four away. I mean, I mean, this Minnesota State team is very good in all phases of the game, which the Mustangs are going to have to try and contain and uh, hopefully come out with good the victory evening, here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the RA facility. On Quick the take a look at the Southwest series Minnesota history. State the Mavericks University leading the, the, the all-time series 32-17. And the Mavericks have won 14 Northern straight Sun here uh, in Soul this uh, series. The last SMSC win over Minnesota the State came during the 2004-2005 season at the SMSC Classic Mustang. where the Mustangs won 74-61. to So much like uh, well, last night against Concordia St. Paul, the, the Mustangs really haven't Minnesota had a whole State lot of uh, recent Angelo, luck uh, in this series against Minnesota State. As we talked about the tonight is the annual Pink Zone Night, overall, raising awareness for breast cancer. Of course, during the halftime of the men's game, there'll be uh, different students, NSIC. different athletes uh, donating hair to uh, a good cause. And it's also Senior Night tonight with the the Lady Mustang seniors and the cheerleaders being honored at halftime of the men's game. The senior men will be honored at pregame of of the men's game. So uh, a lot of stuff going on uh, tonight, a lot of people wearing pink. And so it's just uh, a good night for a good cause here, Matt. Yeah, definitely, it's great. I mean, uh, I mean, the pink zone is just a great name to it. And uh, a lot of people wearing pink out here tonight, uh, today, Mike Boyan. As well as the men's game, you'll see a lot of that. And uh, we'll give you some previews of uh, Will Giddings vote for him for the dunk contest. Uh, the State Farm uh, Dark Horse Dunk Contest as well. And uh, the men's game should be a fun game as well. I mean, uh, Minnesota State, uh, they had a good game against uh, Minnesota State last time. At Minnesota State, they just fell apart a little bit at the end there. So it's going to be a good men's game as well tonight, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. And also it's a pledge uh, weekend for it's a slam dunk, don't drive drunk in memory of a Coach, uh, men's head coach MSSC Brad Bigler's uh, son Drake, who was killed in a car accident involving a drunk driver back on July 28, 2012. So, uh, a few different causes to support here this weekend and uh, a busy weekend here for SMSU athletics, but also a si exciting time with the season uh, drawing to an end. And as we know, Matt, uh, when it comes near the end of the season, pretty much anything can happen. And so now we, we are going to take a 60-second break in, uh, for the America, national anthem. The but uh, stay tuned. When we come back, we will have starting lineups in SMSU Stevens. basketball. So we'll be back in 60 seconds. You're watching Mustang Basketball on KSSU TV. Your heart rate's a little fast. Cause of death, acute myocardial infarction. Have you tried a weight loss program? Likely caused by type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Still smoking? Victims' lungs are black and scarred. You can get a physical exam now, or you can get one later. Use our free risk calculator and talk to your doctor. Lower your risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease and live a healthier life. What's it like when you hear your calling? Will you ignore it? Or will you listen? What if it calls you to go halfway around the world? to serve people you've never met. What will you do when you hear your calling? Peace Corps, life is calling. How far will you go? Hello everybody, welcome back to the RA facility where we are just about ready to get the ga this game started. So let's take a look at the starting lineups, starting with the Minnesota State Mavericks. Starting off with number three, Aubrey Davis, 5'7 guard, junior out of Bloomington, Minnesota. Number 11, Allie Hafer, 5'7 guard, senior out of Plymouth, Minnesota. Number 24, Carly Gangenbacher, 
uh, five uh, senior, senior out of Quincy, Illinois. Jamie number 33, Bresnahan. Jamie Bresnahan, six one yeah, forward Spencer junior Blue out of Edina, Wisconsin. Minnesota. And number 42, Allie, Allie Wilkinson, Wilkinson, six foot forward Head senior out of Blue Mounds, Wisconsin. The Mavericks MTC. coached by She's Emily T. C. in her Sanders second season, assisted by Amy Sander and Jessica Keller. Now let's send it over to Matt Callahan, who has the SMSU starting lineups. And now uh, the right. starting lineup so for your senior guard out of Hancock, University Minnesota, Mustang. number 14, Bree Holloman. A five and six foot from forward Hancock, senior number from 14. Omaha, Bree. Nebraska, number 21, Jesse Watts. And 5'9 guard senior six out of Bancroft, Omaha, Iowa, Nebraska, Ro number, number 23, Jesse Rebecca Rowling. Watts. And six foot forward senior out of Indiana, Iowa, Bancroft, Iowa, Iowa, number 25, number Hannah Beeler. And six three forward senior out of Fort Dodge, Iowa, number 45, Allison Nagel. The Lady Mustangs are coached by Hannah Allison Kruger in her fourth season. Assistant coaches are Abby Oakland, and Claire DeWoolis, and Micah Dodge, Mims. Iowa, all right, thank you very much, Matt. Tonight's officials, referee Brian Riken out of Gayville, South Dakota. Also helping him, Jason Gant out of Omaha, Nebraska, and Bob Morrison out of Blair, Nebraska. So those are tonight's starting lineups, as well as the coaches and officials for this uh, Lady Mustang basketball game. And we are just about ready to uh, get the action started tonight. And the, the Mustangs looking to rebound from a tough game last night. It's, uh, also some excitement last night, too, with the men's game. So looking to... It's going to be some tough games against some ranked uh, opponents, but the Mustangs Tonight's looking to go 2-0 uh, here the tonight. And again, as uh, Matt mentioned in the pregame, one of the players to watch out for, Allie Wilkinson, number 42 yeah, for uh, the Mavericks. Yeah, I mean, she, again, she rebounds the ball very well. She, sh she scores at well sometimes and she can steal the ball. So you gotta make sure that you're protecting the ball at all times, making sure she's not getting those steals. And again, turnovers have hurt the Lady Mustangs. So they gotta not turn over the ball as much here in this game, Michael. Wilkinson and Nagel fight for the tip, but it's Bree Holloman and the Mustangs who come up with it. Lots of skip pass to Holloman. Holloman trying to drive. A nice pass. And a foul on the inside as Hannah Beeler gets on the inside. Three, foul on Jamie Bresnahan, her first personal. First that was a nice ball movement and a nice job by Holloman to see uh, Beeler got on the inside. Yeah, definitely. It was a lot of cutting action as well. Hannah Beeler got up at the top and came down towards the basket. Nice pass by Bree Holloman to get her uh, down low and commit the foul. And now Hannah Beeler's at the line. Well, we talked about the... The Mustangs struggled last night, and there certainly were many, many of them, but one thing we talked about was that the Mustangs failed to move without the ball, but uh, right there, uh, Beeler did a nice job getting towards the basket and uh, getting that pass. Bresnahan to Davis. Now a kick out, now a three-pointer, no good. And the ball knocked out of bounds. It'll go to the Mustangs. As we see a lot of pink here in the RA facility. Again, a bit, another good atmosphere for basketball. Davis guarding Holloman, and now another foul called. They're going to call an offensive foul on Hannah Buehler, a legal screen. Mustang ball number 25, Hannah Buehler, her first personal foul, first team foul of the half. And so Aubrey Davis is going to be bringing it up for the Mavericks. Davis to Hafer. Now Wilkinson gets it in to Bresnahan. Bresnahan puts it up, shot short, rebound by Nagel. Now Holloman's going to be the one to bring it up. Holloman, nice pass to Rebecca Rowling, and the shot Rebecca rolls in. Rowling. Again, nice ball movement, and a nice movement without the ball by Rebecca Rowling, and the Mustangs have a 4-0 lead. Bree Holloman's finding, uh, finding everybody open there. I mean, good cutting action, and great find by Bree Holloman to get, get it to Rebecca Rowling for the nice two. But Bresnahan left with too much breathing room, and she gets the first basket of the game for the Mavericks. Now 4-2, 18-25 to left here in the first half. Becker rolling over to Holloman. Holloman getting a nice screen from Beeler. Holloman putting up a three, and it's good. Corey Holloman, probably the best three-point shooter on the team, puts it up and knocks it down. 
And Matt, another thing that the Mustangs struggled with last night was their three-point shooting, but uh, first uh, attempt, nothing but net. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you want to get on to a fast start and keep consistently doing that. But the Mavericks answer right back, Jamie Bresnahan. The first uh, five points for the Mavericks belong to Bresnahan. And it's back down to a two-point game, seven to five. Nagel over to Holloman. Holloman again getting a nice screen. Now over to Beeler. And now Watts, as there's eight, sec eight seconds on the shot clock. The Mustangs are gonna have to get something going. And Br Holloman puts up a deep one and no good. And now Hafer bringing it up the court for the Mavericks. Try going coast to coast, shot no good with the rebound. Nice ball movement, and Davis puts up with a three. No good. And a loose ball. And chased down by Hafer. So another opportunity for the Mavericks. It's Gangenbacher. Her shot, no good. So the Mavericks had a, several different opportunities there, but couldn't convert. And the Mustangs still with a two-point lead. Now it's Becca Rowling putting up a three. That one's no good. And it's chased down. Actually, nice hustle by Nagel to reach in there and knock the ball out of bounds off Wilkinson. So the Mustangs will keep possession. And that's the rush, Ellen Dagger and Michaela Sothoff coming in for the Mustangs. For the Mavericks, Ashley Olsen coming in. Lots over to Degler, now to Sothoff. Now inside to Nagel, Nagel puts it up. Nice kiss off the backboard and in. Nine to five lead for the Mustangs. So Matt, so far, the Mustangs looking pretty decent against a really good Mankato team. Exactly, and Allison Nagel, she's gotta be more involved in this game than last game. She didn't She didn't have the best game against Concordia St. Paul. Now she's getting involved early and we need her uh, to get going early and often. But Wilkinson left wide open and she knocks down the shot. Another lapse in the Mustang defense and it costs them. Now a nine to eight ball game, 16 minutes left as Wilkinson gets, gets her first basket of the night. And that ball went out of bounds off the foot of Sodhoff. A big mistake by her not getting after it, getting after the ball. It's the second turnover on the Mustangs here. Again, last time these two teams met, the Mavericks were able to uh, take advantage of these those uh, Mustang turnovers. We'll see if they can get some points off this uh, last turnover. Hafer out to Olsen. Olsen puts it up. That one's no good. A long rebound and an over-the-back foul on Gengenbacher. Number 24, Carly Gengenbacher. First now Lexi Olfers is going to be coming in Checking from in Bresnahan. For 15-30 uh, left here in the first half. Rush. Oh my goodness. As Degler uh, cut to the other side of the lane. And Rush was counting on Degler to stay there, but it uh, didn't work out. And another three-pointer knocked down by Allie Hafer. And the Mavericks get their uh, first lead of the game. Man, they're hitting their threes right now. They had three threes in this in this uh, first half here. I mean, three of six, 50%. Um, and the Mustangs, they gotta stop turning over the ball because it's gonna really hurt them here. And another dumb pass again. You're better off making the simple pass than uh, trying to get on SportsCenter. <laughs> but, uh, that leads to another uh, basket off a turnover. And Minnesota State with a 13-9 lead. Really turning or momentum around quickly and almost another turnover there. But the Sothoff comes up with a loose ball and a pushing foul on Hafer. But again, just another terrible pass. And uh, hopefully the Mustangs will get settled down after this media timeout. 14-35 left to go in the first half. Mavericks with a 13-9 lead. We're gonna take a 30 second break. Stay tuned, you're watching Mustang Basketball right here on KSSU TV. Hey, Barrett! Look, Timmy's in trouble, Anne. I told you to stay out of here! Come on, loser! Someone should do something. Boy, you never see that happen. 
If you see abuse or neglect, learn what you can do at BeHumane.org. Welcome back to the RA facility here in Marshall, Minnesota on Pink Zone Night, the last regular season game of uh, the year. And the Mustangs right now trailing Minnesota State 13-9 after uh, a few uh, costly turnovers. The Mustangs, four turnovers already, uh, zero turnovers for uh, the Mavericks. Uh, and that, uh, so far, the Mavericks have been able to get five points off those turnovers. So uh, hopefully after this timeout, the Mustangs will be able to settle down on offense, not uh, try to force things uh, on offense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you look at some of those passes, and there was a lot of miscommunication between, I think, Anessa Rush and uh, Ellen Degler with some of those passes, and uh, they just got to make sure they're making the right pass and not give, turning the ball over because now the uh, Minnesota State Mavericks have five points off turnovers. Can't be making that uh, mistake this early. And the last thing you want to do against a, a good team like Minnesota State or pretty much any team for that matter is hand them opportunities and there you go again another golden opportunity uh, handed uh, to Minnesota State traveling violation by Degler and now it's five turnovers by the Mustangs Hayford to Olfers now to Olsen and now Wilkinson Paulson over to Hafer. Hafer kicks it back out to Wilkinson now Wilkinson drives, puts it up, and it's good. Allie Wilkinson. Now a six-point lead for the Mavericks, 15 to nine. Degler with the ball, over to Holloman. Holloman trying to drive, puts up a shot, a high arcing shot. It's no good, knocked out of bounds, last touch by the Mustangs. So Matt, the Mustangs have come up uh, empty on quite a few of their last possessions, and. The Mavericks starting to get on a run here. Yeah, exactly. They're getting on a run. And, I mean, again, Allie Wilkinson had a nice shot. I mean, drove right to the basket and got in there. You got to get a body on her because she will definitely make you pay. That shot by Good Hillary by Paulson Hillary rolls in. And just like that, it's an 18-9 ball game. They're going to say that was a three-pointer. Rebecca rolling with the ball. Gets the screen from Dusky. Rolling almost loses it. Tries to get it inside to Dusky. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the Mavericks. Checking in for the Mavericks, number 21, Tyra Johnson. Checking Tyra in Johnson Boston coming in for Minnesota State. Jesse Watts, 25. Jesse Hannah Watts, Beeler, Hannah Beeler, and Allison Nagel coming back in for the Mustangs. Watts getting the inbound pass. I'll get it, sit into Nagel. Nagel. Her shot, no good. Rebound by Johnson. Now it's Olsen pushing it up for the Mavericks. Olsen back to Johnson. Now inside it. Johnson, her shot, no good, but she gets her own rebound. Again, the shot, no good, but a foul on the play on Rebecca Rowling. So Tyra Johnson, a six-foot freshman out of Apple Valley, Minnesota, going to be going to the free throw line. First free throw up and good. And a double figure lead for the Mavericks now. And that makes an 11 point lead for the Mavericks and Matt, uh, much like last night, the Mustangs uh, getting close to halfway through the first half and the Mustangs have really struggled getting some points on the board so far tonight. And they started fast, that's the thing, Michael. I mean, they started really fast, they had a nice lead and then uh, these turnovers have just been hurting the Lady Mustangs right now, and um, it's just been almost, th they're on a, a really good run right now, Minnesota State is, so uh, Mustangs got to stop them somehow here. Absolutely, the Mustangs uh, did have a 9-5 to lead, but it's been a, an 11-0 run for the Mavericks. So the Mustangs definitely be nice to get a stop here. Bresnahan over to Paulson, now inside to Johnson. And almost a turnover there, but Paulson gets the pass on the outside. Now another three-point attempt knocked down by three Brittany by Sherber. Brittany Sherber. Already Minnesota State, uh, five of eight from the behind the three-point line. 
the Mavericks with a 23 to nine lead with 11.47 left to go in the first half. Holloman over to Watts. Watts looking inside, but it, instead to Nagel. Nagel puts it up, and boy, I, I don't know if I was coach uh, Kruger, I'd want her taking too many three more threes tonight because the three-pointers she has taken this weekend have just been ugly. That one barely touched in the, uh, the bottom of the net. It seems like they're a little bit, you know, just hesitant on shooting it too when you're looking at them when they're uh, Allison Nagel shooting it. I mean, they gotta have some confidence in their shot. Sherbert with another three-point attempt and uh, no good. And now Holloman loses the ball momentarily but regains possession. And another questionable pass knocked out of bounds by the Mavericks. The Mustangs need to be smart and anticipate where that defense is going to be. Again, six tur turnovers for the Mustangs, zero for the Mavericks. And when you have zero turnovers, uh, you're going to win, uh, I could probably say, 99.9% .9 of the time. And there's another questionable pass. Again, Watts trying to force it on that basket cut by Rebecca Rowling. Coach Kruger trying to argue that uh, one of the Minnesota State players kicked it out of bounds, but uh, to no avail. 10.55 left, Minnesota State up 23 to nine. Make that 25 to nine as a Tyra Johnson found an opening on the inside. That's now four points for her, and Matt, this game is getting ugly in a hurry. Yeah, definitely. That doesn't help as well. I mean, you know, fouls and uh, turnovers have just been killing this Lady Mustang team right now. I mean. Uh, you got to give it to Minnesota State. They've been you know, shooting their shots very well. And, uh, I mean, they're just playing really well defensively. I mean, they're reading uh, what the Mustangs are doing, trying to do offensively, and they're taking that away. A 20 nothing run by the Mavericks. It was at one point a 9-5 to SMSU lead. But that, uh, boy, did that to disappear in a hurry thanks to some uh, turnovers. And the ball knocked out of bounds, and so... The Mavericks will get a second chance. Like we said, eight turnovers now by the Mustangs, and the Mavericks have gotten 12 points already off of those Mustang turnovers. Now a nice move inside the basket, no good, as Gangenbacher's shot just rolled off the rim. And actually, they're gonna call an offensive foul on that play. So that's the first turnover by Minnesota State, close to uh, halfway through the first half. Ten minutes and 15 seconds left. Again, the Mustangs need a basket in a, in a bad way here. And Nagel trying to work it inside, but instead back out to Holloman. Now Holloman to rolling. Six seconds on the shot clock. And Holloman, I don't know how the Mavericks left her so wide open, but Watts with a nice assist there. That's what the Mustangs needed, Matt. Yeah, that's what they needed to really end this run and really <laughs> get back in this game. I mean, uh, the Mavericks have locked them down defensively, and finally the Mustangs uh, get an open uh, open person down there to make the shot. And Johnson's shot no good, so the Mustangs with a chance to get on a little run of their own. 25 to 11, and 9.24 left in the first half. Holloman has five of the Mustangs' 11 points. Again, the shot clock down to eight seconds. Watts out to Holloman. Holloman puts it up, and it's good. Three Holloman now with eight points. But the Mustangs still trail by 11. Bresnahan over to Davis. Now to Sherber. Sherber again puts up another three, but it's no good. And another over the back foul called on Gangenbacher. That's her second personal. And that will lead to the under 10 media timeout. Eight minutes, 53 seconds left in the first half. Minnesota State with a 25 to 14 lead. We're gonna take a 30 second break. Stay tuned, you're watching Mustang Basketball right here on KSSU TV. They say America is the land of opportunity. But today, one out of every six children lives without enough. That's nearly 13 million of us living below the poverty line, struggling every day just to hang on. This is America. Together, we can do so much. Will you help? 
Go to povertyusa.org today and get involved. Welcome back to the RA facility right here on the campus of SMSU for the Mustangs trailing Minnesota State 25 to 14 with eight minutes, 53 seconds left. The Mustangs coming in at the bottom of the NSIC South with a two and 19 conference record. Uh, Minnesota State second in the NSIC South behind Wayne State with a 17 and four conference record. And so far, Matt, uh, we, the game's kind of shown itself why uh, these two teams are on opposite ends of the NSIC South Division. It just hasn't been a very pretty game so far for the Mustangs. Yeah, definitely, and the 20 to nothing run did not help the Lady Mustangs uh, as well. I mean, they're up nine to five at one point, as you pointed out. I mean, um, they just, uh, I don't know what was going on with the turnovers. I mean, they had, uh, Minnesota State has been capitalizing on those turnovers, eight turnovers by the Lady Mustangs, and they've gotten 12 points off turnovers. So. Uh, Lady Mustangs trying to get back in this game is uh, not turn over the ball and uh, keep doing the cutting action as well because that was working at the beginning. It looks, look, looks like they kind of got away from that, but now I think they should be able to bring it back and do some, uh, get some, get some things done offensively, defensively. I mean, defensively, I think that they should just close out on their shooters because from three, three uh, excuse me, three point range, they're five of uh, Minnesota State is five of ten, so. Got to make sure that they're contesting those three-point shots. As SMSU, uh, Hannah Beeler just picking up her second uh, personal foul as Davis. She puts up a shot, no good. Rebound by Holloman. Holloman to Miller, and Miller with a travel. Man, you you got numbers, and you another unforced uh, error by the Mustangs, and that's ten turnovers now, and we still have eight minutes left in this first half. Wilkinson going up in a, actually a traveling violation on Wilkinson. So only the second turnover by the Mavericks. The Mustangs actually on a five nothing run here the last few minutes, but the, they need to stop turning the ball over. The Mustangs still down by 11, eight minutes left. Degler, her shot rolls out. And boy, Matt Degler has had a tough weekend. She uh, missed quite a few shots last night. With the referee uh, saying the ball was last touch out of bounds by the Mavericks. So Bree Holloman set to inbound it. Gets it to Dusky. A handoff to Watts. And uh, some more miscommunication. And that's 11 turnovers now by the Mustangs. I guarantee you at this rate, the Mustangs aren't going to win this game if they keep turning the ball over like this. That's been hurting them this whole weekend, technically. I mean, they had almost 18 last night against Concordia St. Paul. Nice basket on the inside by Bresnahan. Bresnahan. Gives her seven points now on the night. 27 to 14, Minnesota State with the lead. Seven and a half to play here in the first half. As Degler loses the ball and now it gets knocked out of bounds but a reach in foul called on Wilkinson. And that's her first personal foul. Ulfer is coming back in for the Mavericks. Vanessa Rush and Kayla Sadhoff coming in for the Mustangs. Vanessa Rush going to inbound it this time. Rush into Dusky. Dusky puts up a shot, gets it to kiss off the backboard. And Emily Dusky with her first basket and the deficit back down to 11. A three point attempt, good for Hillary Paulson. And she got a nice kick out pass from Lexi Olfers. And a 14 point lead. And boy, Matt, the Mustangs, or excuse me, the Mavericks already with 12 three point attempts. That's uh, quite a lot. Quite a lot, and they're making their, I mean, they've been open on almost all of them. I mean, the Mustangs have to make sure that they're contesting every three point shot because they're making them right now. And the Mavericks, uh, Averaging about seven three-point field goals per game this season. They're already at six. It's Hafer, a dangerous skip pass to Davis, but Davis drives in for the basket. Aubrey Davis, Aubrey Davis her first basket, and the lead back up to 14 for Minnesota State. 6.24 left here in the first half. 
Degler a skip pass to Miller. Miller another dangerous skip pass to Dusky. Now over to Degler. Eight seconds on the shot clock. It's hot hop trying to work inside, kicks it back out to Rush. Rush now driving, puts up a floater, no good. Rebound by Dusky. Nice hustle by the Mustangs, but now they gotta take advantage of the second opportunity. And another pass that's just thrown away. And it's Wilkinson taking it down court. And a foul called to the Mustangs. Dale Wilkinson out as it looked like she was kind of losing her balance. But again, the Mustangs right now at 12 turnovers. Still with five minutes and 47 seconds left in the first half. And that you're not going to win uh, too many games, if any, when you're uh, doing a poor job like this of taking care of the ball. Yeah, taking care of the ball, and I mean, you look at it, I mean, <laughs> I mean, they got a bunch of points off turnovers. I mean, 16 points off turnovers. The Lady Mustangs just have to take care of the ball, plain and simple. And uh, that was a big time, uh, uh, they're going to call a jump ball, but the possession arrow will stay with the Mustangs. It's Hot Hop kind of got stopped by a brick wall there on that drive. Sadoff needs to inbound it, gets it to Degler. Degler putting up a deep two, and that Ellen one goes in. Degler. Ellen Degler gets her first basket of the game. Back down to a 14 point deficit, 34 to 20. As Olsen puts up a three, and that one's good. Three and the Mustangs Olsen. giving uh, the Mavericks shooters too much breathing room. That's back up to a 17 point lead, the biggest lead uh, for the Mavericks now. I mean, seven of 13 from three-point range, that is just insane. I mean, 53%, and their field goal percentage is at 53% as well. And another turnover can't, I mean, easier said than done. You just cannot turn over the ball 13 times in the first half. Del Soto with her uh, first basket with that steal. It's just lazy ball handling, lazy passes. And again, the Mustangs not moving without the ball. A pass on the inside to Dagger, but she couldn't handle it. 14 turnovers. Still with four and a half minutes left. A nice drive by Hafer. Her shot no good. Loose ball finally grabbed by Degler. 14 turnovers is about to where you want a, a team to be for a, a game, let alone the first half. As uh, Sadhoff gets the ball stripped from her. And again, more lazy ball handling by the Mustangs. And that foul called on Michaela Sothoff. And that leads to the under five media timeout. Four minutes and four seconds left in the first half. Mavericks with a 39 to 20 lead. We're gonna take a 30 second break. Stay tuned, you're watching Mustang basketball right here on KSSU TV. When I was first diagnosed with HIV, Cookie and I decided to fight this disease. Now we're here to urge you to stand with us in the fight against HIV. In the U.S., about half of the new HIV cases have occurred among African Americans. Get informed, get tested. Early detection can save your life. If you test positive, seek treatment from a doctor. Go to WeStandWithMagic.com, get resources, and become a member today. Welcome back to the RA facility here in Marshall, Minnesota, where the Mavericks hold a 39 to 20 lead with four minutes and four seconds left to go in the first half. And uh, a big thanks to that, Matt, by the 15 turnovers already by the Mustangs, 18 uh, points off those turnovers. So uh, uh, needless to say, uh, uh, Coach Bruder is probably uh, giving her team a little bit of a talking to in that huddle right now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, 18 points off turnovers, 15 turnovers. I mean, a lot of, a lot of this is like um, almost a full game of t uh, turnovers. Like, I mean, uh, 10 turnovers is like something that, you know, you want to be around at the end of the game, but they've, they're have they way over that. So um, <laughs> the Mustangs just need to find ways to not turn over the ball. I mean, it's got to stop now or else it, it might get out of hand here quick. Well, the Mustangs actually over their season average now. They average 14.8 turnovers a game. Almost a steal there as Olsen putting up another three. That one no good. Tipped around, but Holloman finally grabs the ball for the Mustangs. 
And Holloman trying to drive, puts him a wild shot. And another foul. And that, that's much like last night. The Mustangs, not with favorable numbers, but still decide to throw up a shot. Mustang foul number 21. And that's going to put the Mavericks Watts. in the bonus as Jesse Watts picks up the foul, foul her first foul personal. And, and it's Lexi Olfers at the line. One Olfer is a junior out of Wasika, Minnesota. That first free throw up and good. Had a whole lot of free throw shots tonight. The Mustangs two for two, Minnesota State uh, three for three, so not a, not a whole lot of free throws. And that free throw no good. So a 40 to 20 game with three minutes, 36 seconds left here in the first half. Holloman to Nagel, Nagel to Dusky. Now Watts, we're rolling now inside, but another bad pass, too high out of Dusky's reach. And a traveling violation that time by Del Zotto, Del Zotto, excuse me. Jamie Bresnahan coming back in for the Mavericks, but a rare turnover there by the by Minnesota State. 16 to three is the turnover game, and uh, trust me, Matt, the turnover, uh, that's not a stat that you uh, wanna win there. Yeah, definitely you don't wanna win. I mean, uh, Lady Mustangs, I think, the most turnovers they've had in this, this season was uh, 22, and uh, they're really inching close to that, and they don't wanna do that right now. <laughs> and Nagel over to Holloman. Holloman puts up a shot, and that one rolls out. And another foul called. And so that will send the Mavericks back to the free throw line. Rebecca Rowling picks up her Rebecca second Rowling personal. Second personal foul. Checking in for the Whitney Miller and Hannah Beeler checking in. Beeler, Rebecca Rowling, Emily Dusky coming Whitney out. Miller. But Ashley, Ashley Olson, Olson at the line, the junior out of Blue Earth, Minnesota, already has knocked down a, a three pointer tonight. That free throw is good. And uh, Olsen actually was a transfer out of the University of South Dakota. So coming down to uh, Minnesota State and uh, contributing nicely tonight so far with five points. And the lead up to 22 for the Mavericks. Holloman to Beeler. Beeler looking inside, nice, well, would have been a nice pass to Miller, but again, that's too strong, and the Mustangs uh, practically begging Checking for a blowout here with all the these Mavericks turnovers. Three, Davis. Is Davis coming back in for Olsen. Again, not to, too much for the Mustang faithful to cheer about so far tonight. Davis with the ball, gets it inside to Bresnahan. Bresnahan puts it up, shot no good, rebound by Watts. And Holloman bringing it up for the Mustangs. She tried looking inside, now tries, now gets it inside to Beeler. Beeler goes up with the basket and the foul. And the basket by Hannah Beeler. Beeler's first basket Every of the night. Ball on number 10, Sammy Del Rado, her first personal foul, six key foul of the half. Beeler Sammy Delzato picks up her first personal. And beat her actually with four points now in the night. Make that five. And the deficit down to 19, 42 to 23. 157 left to go in the first half. Delzato to Bresnahan, a skip pass. Now to Delzato putting up a three, that one's no good. Rebound by Nagel. Holloman once again pushing the ball up the court. Pass out to Watts. Now Watts trying to get inside. Kicks it out to Holloman. Pass knocked out of bounds. Should be a Mustang ball. And finally, the referee comes in from the uh, far side of the court. <laughs> Holloman getting closely guarded by Aubrey Davis. Holloman inside to Nagel, Nagel shot, no good. And Nagel struggles 
uh, her shooting struggles continue. Only two points on the night, and she picks up her first foul. Hillary Paulson coming in for Sammy Delzato. Alexi Alfer is back to the free throw line. Free throw, up and good. Checking in for the Mustangs, number 50. Now Ellen Degler coming in for Nagel. The second free throw, up and good for Ulfers. Now has three points on the night. And Ulfers will come back out for Allie Wilkinson. Back up to a 21 point lead for the Mavericks with a minute 28 to go here in the first half. Like we said, Matt, it's been a, uh, to use one of the uh, young kid lingos, uh, or use some young kid lingo, the mu Mustangs have been on the struggle bus here tonight. Yeah, definitely on the struggle bus. Uh, I just think, uh, again, turnovers have been hurting the Lady Mustangs, but you gotta give it to Minnesota State as well. They've done Every some things defensively to disrupt this uh, Lady Mustang ball, offense, and uh, I mean, you gotta give them credit. I mean, that's why they're nationally ranked, and uh, I mean, the Lady Mustangs just can't find an answer uh, to these turnovers. Jagler, that free throw, no good. Rebound by Bresnahan. Bresnahan pushing it up. Gets it to Sherber. Back to Bresnahan, she puts it up, and it's good. Jamie Bresnahan, Jamie Bresnahan now with 10 half. points. And the Mavericks with a 24 point lead, 47 to 23, with 50 seconds left. Holloman looking to get it to Beeler. And Beeler gets double teamed on the inside, and a jump ball will give the ball to the Mavericks. So yet another turnover, 18. 18 turnovers in the first half, and that is a ridiculous stat. Davis and the Mavericks not in any real hurry here on this possession. Bresnahan over to Sherber. Sherber puts it up. That one no good. Nice box out by Miller. And she's rewarded with the rebound there. And now a timeout called by the Mustangs. 30 seconds timeout. So the Mustangs can hold for the last shot with 18.2 seconds left, but uh, hasn't been pretty, Matt. They're down 47 to 23. Obviously, when you turn the ball over 18 times, you can't expect it to be a close game. Yeah, I mean, we've said turnovers, I mean, the whole time here. Uh, points off turnovers, 18 for Minnesota State. But, I mean, look at their bench points right now. They have 25 bench points, Minnesota State does right now. And, I mean, they're doing one heck of a job, I mean, off the bench. Um, points in the paint have been crucial for them too. They've been getting the basket, getting some, uh, getting a couple offensive rebounds here. I mean, they've been passing the ball around. I mean, Minnesota, you got to give it to Minnesota State. I mean, they, they'll capitalize off turnovers. And like Coach Bigler told us, interceptions lead to touchdowns in football terms. And in basketball, it's basically you turn it over, most likely the other team will try and capitalize off your turnovers. Mavericks led by Bresnahan, who averages a little over six points per game this season, but has 10 in the first half here. As Watts in trouble, but a foul called. And that'll send Watts to the line for a one and one Mavericks foul number three, Aubrey Davis. Foul on Aubrey her Davis, first foul her first personal. Fouls half. Jesse Watts at the line shooting one and one. Checking in for the Mustangs, number 11, Michaela Sadoff, and number 25. Hannah Andy Beeler and Michaela Sadoff coming in. Whitney Miller and Allison Negro coming out for the Mustangs. Jesse Watts yet to score any points. But has a golden opportunity here, but another missed free throw. And Paulson pushing it up for the Mavericks. Paulson puts it up, and it just does roll out. And that's how the first half is going to end. But the... Not a whole lot to complain about for Minnesota State. They hold a 47 to 23 lead at halftime over SMSU. And so a, a struggle a struggle of a first half for the Mustangs. And so we are gonna take a little bit of a break. And when we come back, we will have a wrap up of the first half with stats and we will bring you second half action. So stay tuned. You're watching Mustang basketball right here on KSSU TV. 
Your heart rate's a little fast. Cause of death, acute myocardial infarction. Have you tried a weight loss program? Likely caused by type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Still smoking? Victim's lungs are black and scarred. You can get a physical exam now. Or you can get one later. Use our free risk calculator and talk to your doctor. Lower your risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease and live a healthier life. What's it like when you hear your calling? Will you ignore it? Or will you listen? What if it calls you to go halfway around the world?
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the RA facility here in Marshall, Minnesota, where the SMSU Mustangs, uh, after a struggling uh, in the first half, mightily are uh, trailing Minnesota State 47 to 23 uh, at halftime. Uh, Michael Sterling here with Matt Callahan, and Matt's uh, you know 18 turnovers in the first half. It's hard to hard to come back from that, obviously. But uh, I mean, what's stood out for you for you uh, here uh, in the first half? Well, what really stands out to me is that this Minnesota State Maverick uh, Lady team is very, I mean, very good defensively. I mean, you look at it. I mean, they forced a lot of those turnovers, and, um, and most, I mean, most of them were uh, for the Lady Mustangs were uh, mental mistakes. But I mean, you look at it, and their bench points. I mean, you look at that as well. Twenty-five bench, twenty points, twenty-five points off the bench for the Minnesota State Mavericks. And I mean, they've just been playing well this whole game. They've only turned the ball over three times in the first half. I mean, they've been efficient from the field, 47%, um, eight, eight of 17 from three. So they're shooting from three pretty well for, for uh, 47%. Um, but the Mustangs, uh, I mean, they're shooting the ball well offensively. They just need to not turn the ball over. I mean, because if they're shooting the way like they have been, I mean, this game would be much closer. And with what, I mean, again, they got to stop making those mental mistakes with their passes. They don't need to be fancy with it. Like you said, Michael, they don't need to be fancy with it. Make the right pass at the right time and set up the offense. And if they're going to get back in this game, they, got, they can't get 18 more turnovers in this uh, second half here. Absolutely, those uh, 18 points off turnovers without that would be a completely different game here. And we mentioned uh, pregame that the Mavericks are first in, con in the conference with a, a plus uh, six and a half turnover margin. Well, uh, that margin certainly gonna explode here tonight if uh, things keep uh, at the pace they've been going. Well, the Mustangs gonna be uh, getting the ball to start off the second half here, but the, they certainly have their work cut out for them. Holloman over to Nagel. Nagel only two points in the first half, so she's been kind of struggling uh, here this whole weekend. If she gets it inside to Beeler, Beeler shot no good, but she gets fouled. A foul on Gangenbacher for a third personal. Her third personal foul, first team foul of the half. Beeler with five points on the game so far. And a Beeler at the line. Beeler, uh, one of the uh, six seniors who are going to be honored tonight uh, for the Mustangs. And she makes both free throws to cut the deficit down to 22. Wilkinson gets it inside. A pass out to Hafer. The shot no good. Rebound by Rowling. And now it's Holloman bringing the ball up the court and a foul called as the Rolling and Davis ran into each other. The referee blew the whistle, but uh, as of right now, nothing has been signaled. And uh, I don't know what's going on. I mean, if you're gonna call the whistle, you have to, common sense should know that you're, you mm -hmm. should know what you're gonna be calling, but uh, the referee's now conferring one of the referees is going to come over and talk to Coach uh, TC. And so uh, I guess they're not going to call a foul. Okay. So uh, not sure what the <coughs> that was about, but uh, we're resuming play, and uh, Holloman bringing the ball. Now gets it to Beeler. Now over to Rowling. Rowling puts up a three. No good. And a foul. That's going to be a foul that time. And we'll see who they call it on. They Never call it on Jamie Bresnahan. Jamie Bresnahan. Her That's her second foul. personal. And again, oh, Bresnahan led all scores in this game in the first half with 10 points. Inbound pass to Beeler. Beeler's going to drive, pulls up the shot. No good. Rebound by Bresnahan. And now it's Hafer pushing it up court. Uh, pass to Wilkinson. Now Hafer to Davis, now inside to Gangenbacher. She puts up the shot, no good, but a foul called. And a foul on Rebecca Rowling, her third personal. Her third personal foul, first team foul of the half. Or 
Charlie Gengenbacher at the line to shoot some free throws. And Gengenbacher, I mean, she's the second leading scorer for the Minnesota State uh, Lady Mavericks, and uh, she's 72 uh, from the charity strike, 72%, that is. Um, so uh, she's a definitely a person to watch out for in this game as well. Um, she's been getting a lot of rebounds, getting down on the block, and uh, making a lot of shots down low. And the Maverick lead back up to 24 points with 18.48 left to go in the game. A dangerous skip pass to Sadhoff. And Sadhoff now to Nagel, but the pass intercepted, but a foul called. And we'll see who they call with that foul. It'll be on Wilkinson, her second personal. Maverick call number 42, Ellie Wilkinson. So the Mustangs will take the ball out on the baseline. The Holloman set to inbound it. Gets it into Nagel and a handoff to Watts. Watts with the jumper, that one goes in. First points of the game for Jesse Watts and the deficit back down to 22. But the Mustangs need to make some stops on defense. Hafer with the ball over to Bresnahan. Now Gangenbacher as Mavericks trying to work it inside. Wilkinson puts up a shot and she gets fouled. And Jesse Watts going to get the call. That's her second personal. And Wilkinson averaging a little over 18 points per game this season. Only five points in the first half. So kind of a, a slow first half. But uh, it's not like the Mavericks have needed her uh, to score a whole lot of points as they have uh, been able to take advantage off a lot of uh, SMSU turnovers. But uh, the Mustangs haven't turned the ball over yet here in the first uh, minute, 43 seconds of the second half. You gotta give credit to your teammates too. I mean, 25 points off the bench. I mean, that's a great stat as well. I mean, the turnovers, obviously, I mean, Allie Wilkinson hasn't had to do much in this game, which, I mean, which she'll take on any night. I mean, um, as long as her team's playing well, I mean, and she's playing well, I mean, I mean, this Minnesota State team is a team to look out for in this, uh, coming up in this uh, conference, uh, tournament. Absolutely, conference tournament and the NCAA tournament. This is going to be a team to watch out for. It's a jump ball called and the Mavericks will get the ball. So the first turnover by the Mustangs of the half. But yeah, this is a, there are quite a few teams uh, talking about the NSIC that could cause a stir coming up in the NCAA tournament. I mean, there's Northern State, there's Minnesota State, uh, Concordia, St. Paul, uh, as well as other teams, a few other teams that have received votes in the latest NCAA Division II poll. Especially Wayne State as well. Wayne State uh, did beat uh, Minnesota State at their uh, at their place. So, I mean, Wayne State's another team to look out for the, for the NCAA tournament as well as the conference tournament. Absolutely. So when you're talking about national uh, competition, there's no shortage of uh, teams that could pose a threat uh, late in the season from the NSIC. As Davis, her pass for Hafer a little bit too high. And a rare checking turnover the by the Mavericks. 17 minutes, and 9 seconds left to go in the game here. Minnesota State with a 54 to 27 lead, doubling up on the Mustangs right now. Holloman with the ball. Nice physical defense by Aubrey Davis. But Degler gets the ball on the inside. She goes up, puts up a shot, well short. Rebound by Davis. And now she'll bring the ball up the court. Nice pass inside to Wilkinson. Shot no good, but she got fouled. And again, the Mustangs are not really uh, getting anywhere close to our defense. Mustang foul on number 55, Ellen Degler. Foul on her Ellen Degler, her first personal. Ellie Wilkinson at the line, shooting two. Checking in for the Mavericks, number 14, Ashley Olson. Ashley Olson coming in for Aubrey Davis. And the second free throw good as well. So a 29 point lead for the Mavericks. And the Mustangs uh, 
certainly need to get something going on offense here. Holloman with the ball, trying to drive, pulls up with a shot, no good, but a foul called. And it's on uh, Allie Never Hafer. Number 11, Allie Hafer. Her second, second personal. Team and Bree Holloman at the line Free to shoot Holloman some free throws. Again, Holloman, we talked about her struggles from the free throw line. A good shooter for us, for the Mustangs, but uh, has had some struggles at the line this season. She makes Checking the first one the Mavericks, as Kendra Snaza comes in for Jesse Watts. Checking in for the Mustangs, number 32. Again, uh, Snaza hasn't received a whole lot of playing time this season, but we saw her for a, a little bit last night's game and now getting her first action tonight. The second free throw goes in for Holloman, so two for two on that trip. Paulson in trouble. Now Hafer over to Olsen. And Olsen trying to drive, finds an open lane, and gets the Esther basket. Olsen. Seems just a little bit too easy. Sodhoff with the ball. Now over to Nagel and goes right through her legs. And man, another sloppy, unforced turnover by the Mustangs. And it's just been, just been that kind of weekend, Matt. Yeah, definitely. Now it's up to 20 turnovers uh, in uh, right now in total. Uh, only two no two turnovers in uh, this uh, second half. But I mean, there's a lot, to, a lot of game left. But uh, Lady Mustangs just got to find a way to get going offensively and lock down our defense, take care of the ball. But again, easier said than done. This ball, Olfers on the inside, her shot no good, but a foul on the Mavericks. Well, they're just going to say the ball touched out of bounds by Minnesota State. So no foul called. Holloman with a handoff to Sadhoff. As the Mustangs working the ball around the perimeter. Holloman now inside to Snaza. Takes it back out to Nagel. Nagel puts it up, and it's good. Finally, Allison Nagel, Allison Nagel gets her uh, first three pointer knocked down here this weekend. A 26 point deficit for the Mustangs. Olfers to Olsen. Now it's Paulson. Back inside to Olfers. A nice pass, nice ball movement. And a nice little basket cut by Bresnahan. Bresnahan. Now it's 12 points. Matt, Jamie Bresnahan's really been the difference maker for the Mavericks here tonight. Yeah, definitely. I mean, she's doing one heck of a job by uh, with 12 points on the game tonight. I mean, she only scores six, point, six points a game, but I mean, she's been a real factor uh, here, X factor here for the Lady Mavericks. Dagger goes up strong, gets fouled on the play. I believe they're gonna get Ulfers with that foul. Maverick foul on number 32, let's see And that's gonna bring the uh, first media time out of the half. So 14 minutes, 11 seconds left to play. Minnesota State with a 60 to 32 lead. We're gonna take a 30 second break. Stay tuned, you're watching Mustang Basketball right here on KSSU TV. Like all new parents, my husband and I want what's best for our baby. When it came to immunizations, I wanted the facts. So I carefully researched vaccines, talking to pediatricians and other experts and asking tough questions. The answer was obvious. Vaccines like those against measles and influenza are not only a good idea, they could save our daughter's life. Take the time to get the facts. Vaccines save lives. Welcome back to the RA facility here in Marshall, Minnesota, where the Minnesota State Mavericks have been woman handling the uh, Mustangs pretty much throughout the game, 60 to 32 with uh, 14 minutes and 11 seconds left. And Matt, uh, as we said, not so, not too much to say that we haven't already said, but it's just been uh, uh, too many turnovers by the Mustangs and uh, just uh, the Mavericks have been able to overpower the Mustangs pretty much on uh, all facets of the game here tonight. Yeah, I mean, you look at the score, I mean, uh, 60 to 32, I mean, the Mustangs, doesn't look like uh, they could get back in this one, but 
I like you said, fight to the end. I mean, I mean, Lady Mustangs can't just you know give up on this and say you know oh well we got to prepare for the next one. They just got to fight till the end here. They got to you know have some pride and uh, get some shots off. I mean, they have a lot of pride, but um, you know finish strong. You got to finish strong in this game. Again, it won't get any easier for their first uh, game of the conference tournament on Wednesday. They'll be taking on Northern State, who is first in the NSIC North Division and currently ranked uh, at number Checking 17. In, number 40, As Ziegler uh, nails both free throws, but still a lot of work to be done for the Mustangs. Olsen over to Paulson, now to Ulfers. Now Bresnahan, her shot no good, rebound by Nagel. Now Holloman bringing it up for the Mustangs. Being closely guarded by Olsen, but now Holloman driving and gets the basket. Holloman. That's 12 points now for Bree Holloman. One of, been one of the lone bright spots on offense uh, tonight for SMSU. Now Paulson goes up with the three, no good. Rebound by Dusky. The Mustangs out, actually out rebounding uh, the Mavericks tonight, 23 to 16. One of the few uh, statistical bright spots. I mean, there are some positives to take away from this game here, Michael. I mean, yes, they've out rebounded uh, Minnesota State, and uh, Bree Holman's had some success offensively. Just you know, I mean, the negatives have hurt them mostly. As Dusky gets another basket for the Mustangs, the deficit back down to 22. But Bresnahan puts it up, no good. And a rebound by Holloman, so the Mustangs have a chance to gain a little bit of momentum. As Rowling taking it, puts up a shot, it's good, but the foul before the shot. We'll see who they get the call. It'll be on Olsen for first personal. Now some subs coming in. Tyra Johnson, Aubrey Davis. And uh, Carly Gengenbacher coming back in for the Mavericks. And so Holloman to inbound the ball. And gets it to Dusky. Now Holloman with the ball. Trying to get something set up. Holloman to Watts. Watts looking inside. The pass to Dusky, but a foul called. Coach TC not happy with her defense. Maverick foul number 21. Now Vanessa Rush Johnson. coming in for Bree Holloman. Her first personal foul of seven, team foul of the half. Checking in for the Mustangs number 34, and that's a rush. A foul Emily called, called on Tyra line. Johnson, her first one. personal. And that free throw no good. The Mustangs already in the bonus here. A little over seven minutes into uh, the second half. But a wasted possession there as Dusky couldn't nail that uh, free throw. Gerber to Gangenbacher. And now to Johnson. And now Davis trying to drive baseline. Kicks it back out to Gangenbacher. She puts it up. No good, but a rebound by Johnson. Muscles it up. Shot no good, but a foul. Mustang number 21, Watts. I on Jesse Watts. Her That's her uh, third personal. Both Watts and Rebecca Ever Rowling with three fouls line. each. Two. And Tyra Johnson <laughs> is quietly <laughs> having kind of a solid <laughs> night coming off the bench. Wilkinson, now with seven points Mustang after that last free throw. You mentioned, Matt, the bench points. The Mavericks have had uh, pretty much uh, dominated the Mustangs on the bench scoring as well. Yeah, 28 bench points. I mean, uh, the, <laughs> this Minnesota State Lady, Lady Maverick team is just firing on all cylinders offensively and defensively. I mean, they've been just reading what the uh, Lady Mustangs have uh, put out to them offensively. And, I mean, it's it's tough because Lady Mustangs can't do much to, with this team being, you know, so good in the NSIC. Nagel putting up another three. That one no good. Rebound chased down by Wilkinson. And now Sherber pushing it up the court, but she'll slow it down momentarily. And it's Wilkinson over to Davis. 
with the Mavericks working in around the perimeter. Johnson to Sherber, now to Wilkinson. Wilkinson drives, but a foul call before the shot. Foul on Emily Dusky, her first personal. Now we're gonna see Allie Hafer coming back in for Sherber. 11 minutes, 12 seconds left. The Mavericks with a 24 point lead as Whitney Miller checks in for Rebecca Rowling. Davis puts up a shot and it's good. Aubrey, Aubrey Davis. Davis with four points. Back up to a 26 point lead for Minnesota State. Dusky getting double teamed. She has to pass back out to Nagel. Nagel with the drive, her shot no good. Wilkinson comes up with it. Now it's Davis pushing the tempo for the Mavericks. And a pass. Uh, Hafer not able to handle the pass from Davis. And so a rare turnover by uh, Minnesota State. That's five turnovers by the Mavericks so far in this game, but for the most part, they've really done a good job of taking care of the ball. Rush tried to work it inside, but instead passes it to Nagel. Now Snaza with the ball. Now it's back over to Rush, works it inside to Nagel. Nagel puts it up and it's Allison good. Nagel. Seven points now for Allison Nagel. Again, the team's leading the score, but Matt, she's kind of had a rough weekend. Yeah, she has, but uh, again, uh, when she started off the game, I mean, she started off uh, a really hot, uh, I mean, uh, from, from scoring. Uh, uh, from scoring, I mean, she's, she had a nice shot, and then uh, they kind of went away from her uh, for a little bit there, and then, uh, again, she just couldn't, uh, she didn't get involved enough in, in early in the beginning, and uh, her shots have been off a little bit, but uh, she's been getting going here in this second half, so that's good to see. First free throw for Wilkinson is up and good. Checking in for the Mustangs, number 11, Tree Holloman. Free Holloman, Jesse Watson, Watson, Watson Hannah Beeler are coming back in for the Mustangs. Ten minutes exactly left to go here in the second half. And Wilkinson now with 11 points on the game after those two free throws. And the Mavericks with a 66 to 40 lead. Watts with the ball. Now over to Beeler. Beeler, her another forced pass and results in another turnover. But now a loose ball and a struggle for that loose ball and a foul called. And the Mustang crowd not happy about that call. But I think they're gonna get Whitney Miller on the call and that's exactly who it's on. Mustang call number 33. Now both teams in that one and one bonus. But first, we're going to take the under 10 media timeout. So with nine minutes, 39 seconds left. Minnesota State with a 26 point lead. We're going to take a 30 second break, but stay tuned. You're watching Mustang Basketball right here on KSSU TV. Will I always be working weekends just to stay out of debt? He's a great college for our kids. Out of the question? He's the American dream. Out of our reach? Not if we can help it. We're the National Endowment for Financial Education, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping people just like you get smart about their money. Log on to smartaboutmoney.org today and start taking control of your financial life. Welcome back to the RA facility on the campus of Southwest Minnesota State University where the Mustangs has been a pretty night for our ladies, trailing 66 to 40 to Minnesota State with nine minutes, 39 seconds left. And Matt, the Mustangs have actually done a better job of uh, taking care of the ball in this half, but still, uh, the defense hasn't really been able to stop the, the Maverick offense. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this Maverick offense is showing why they're the top scoring offense in the NSIC. They are first with 79.8 points per game. I mean, they, they've just been playing well in the NSIC. I mean, they can score at will, and they've shown that here tonight. I mean, 45 percent from the field 
uh, 20 of uh, 44. And their free throws have been outstanding as well. 17 of 18, 94%. I mean, this Minnesota State team is quite good. <laughs> Absolutely, and another free throw to add to that total. Ali Hafer, again, a, one of uh, four seniors listed on the Minnesota State roster. And those two free throws up the Minnesota State's percentage now 19 of 20 from the charity stripe. And Hafer now with five points on the night and a 28 point lead now for the Mavericks as Holloman tumbles and a jump ball. But uh, fortunately for the Mustangs, possession arrow is, goes their way, so it's gonna stay with SMSU. Holloman getting the inbound pass again. Aubrey Davis has done a nice job uh, playing nice post defense on Holloman pretty much all game. And now it's Beeler to Nagel. Again, Nagel's been, for the most part, working on the outside on the perimeter, and that's not where you usually want your post player as the Mustangs once again turn the ball over. At 23 points off turnovers for the Mavericks. Has helped them get to a 28 point lead here, Matt. Yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> they they know how to play some defense as well. I mean, uh, they're I mean they're scoring defense is uh, one of the tops in the conference as well. I mean, they're fifth in the conference with 65.4 uh, average. I mean, defensively they're pretty sound and they know how to get some steals. They obviously shown. Uh, I mean, they've caused 22 turnovers on the Lady Mustangs. So. Um, this Minnesota State team is just, you know, very sound offensively and defensively. A rare miss from the free throw line by Minnesota State. That last foul was Jesse Watts' fourth, and she, she just came out. So well, we might not be seeing Jesse Watts on the court for a while. Second free throw goes in to give Minnesota State a 29-point lead with 8.55 left to go in the game. Snaza over to Degler. Now to Holloman. Holloman gets a nice screen from Beeler. Now Degler tries to get it inside to Snaza. Kicks back out to Beeler. Beeler puts it up. Shot no good. And chased down by Rebecca Rowling. A nice hustle by the Mustangs, who again, they're out rebounding a Minnesota State. Now Rebecca Rowling puts up a mid range jumper. No good. Just does roll out, but Rowling chases down the offensive board. Actually, she didn't quite get the rebound, but she knocked it back over to Beeler. And so the Mustangs get another bite at the apple. But nice hustle by Rebecca Rowling on this possession. Now Degler on the inside. She puts it up. Again, no good. But Degler gets the offense rebound, but again, no good. Man, the Mustangs couldn't buy a bucket on that possession. And now a Tafer over to Wilkinson. Wilkinson now driving. She got tripped. And so Wilkinson will go back to the free throw line. And that's foul number three on Hannah Beeler. Allie Wilkinson shooting two. Allie Wilkinson with 12 points on the game. Again, averaging 18 points per game. As she makes her uh, first free throw. Checking in for the Mavericks. Hillary Paulson. Uh, coming in, Carly Gengenbacher coming out. Checking in for the Mustangs, number and 11. And Michaela Sothoff coming in for Kendra Snaza for the Mustangs. Second free throw for Wilkinson, up and good. So Wilkinson now with four, 14 points. For the Mavericks, As she comes 32. out, Lexi Olfers will come Lexi in for Olfers. her. But Matt, the Mustangs now trailing by 31, so they're gonna have to really uh, get on high gear here with seven minutes, 45 seconds left. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they gotta, gotta find ways to score and uh, lock down on defense. And those uh, easy missed shots are not gonna help as uh, Holland missed uh, pretty much a gimme right there. Paulson with the ball. Uh, skip pass to Bresnahan. Almost went over her head there. Now it's Hafer back to present the hand. And now Paulson gonna drive baseline. And she puts it up, no good, but an offensive rebound by Olfers, and her shot goes in. 
Five points on the night now for Ulfers. And now a foul called on Paulson. And that will send the Mustangs to the free throw line. Every foul on number 22, Paulson, their second personal foul. Sammy Delzato coming in for the Mavericks. Emily, Emily, Emily Dusky coming in for the Mustangs. Rebecca Rowling at the line, shooting. And Rebecca Rowling at the free throw line. Rebecca Rowling with only two points on the night. Make that three. Again, uh, one of uh, six seniors who are going to be honored at halftime of the men's game tonight. But, uh, you know, not the, for sure, Matt, not the way that the these seniors wanted to uh, end their uh, home career. Yeah, especially at home, you know. I mean, it is their last regular season home game. Um, the last game they'll ever play here at the RA facility, which is, um, tough. You know, you never want to, you know, lose on the last game you play here in, at the RA facility. But luckily, they have one more game to really, or I mean, they might have a whole slew of games if they do really well in the conference tournament. But um, I mean, again, you don't want to have that on uh, lose on the last time you ever play here. So um, hopefully, they can make a one heck of a comeback here. You never know. Delzato shot no good. So the Mustangs, uh, they're on life support, but at least they're still alive. They're down 31 with six and a half to play. Now Sadha puts it up, that one no good. Rebound by Delzato. Delzato now pushing it up the court for Minnesota State. And she uh, was almost gonna take it coast to coast, but the ball knocked out of bounds by the Mustangs. Again, only four turnovers in the second half here by SMSU, but those uh, 18 first half turnovers might just have been too much to recover from as Delzato goes up and gets the basket. Sammy Delzato. Four points now for Sammy Delzato. And that's the difference in this game, Michael. I mean, the turnovers was just the big part of it. I mean, 24 points in the paint, 33 bench points, and then uh, 24 points off turnovers. So, I mean, that's the biggest difference in this game. That's why it's just so it, the Lady Mustangs have just kind of been kind of blown out in this game. Paulson over to Delzato. And now it's Bresnahan. Delzato inside to Paulson. Now back to Delzato. Six on the shot clock. Nice pass to Olfers with the basket. Alexi Olfers uh, quietly uh, having a solid game with seven points now and a 35 point lead for the Mavericks. 5.24 to play. And a foul called, an offensive foul called on Emily Dusky. Emily Dusky her third personal foul, 10 to keep following Her third personal one. Matt, a decent Mavericks crowd out here for the uh, women's game, game here tonight. But the, there hasn't really been anything for them to really cheer about all game. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, they haven't really, I mean, at the, f at the beginning of the game, I mean, the Mustangs had a 9-5 lead, but then after that, Mavericks kind of took over. But, I mean, everybody's, I mean, it's good crowd, I mean, to really support uh, Lady Mustangs, even though it's not the way, they, they're not playing the way they want to right now. Absolutely, the RA Dusky facility, one of the best atmospheres, foul. one of the best crowds uh, in the NSIC, Hillary but when you uh, are able to take two. a crowd early, out, out early, when you're playing on the road, that's a big advantage to uh, the road team. And that's exactly what Minnesota State has been able to do tonight as Paulson makes that first free throw. The second free throw up and good for Paulson as well. Uh, 79 to 42. Hillary Paulson now with eight points on the night. 37 points off the bench for the Mavericks. And that's another thing that's made a difference in this game. Every call, number 14, foul Ashley called Olsen. on Ashley Olsen. And that will send the Mustangs to the line, but not before our last Time media timeout. Four minutes, 57 seconds left to go in the game. The Mavericks have it well in hand, up 79 to 42. We're going to take hey, a 30 second man. break, but stay tuned. You're watching Mustang Basketball, basketball right here on KSSU nice TV. Do you know a young woman with severe joint and chest pain, fever, skin rashes, and overwhelming fatigue? Common symptoms for a challenging ailment. Lupus, a very serious, sometimes deadly immune disorder. Lupus affects millions of people, usually attacking women during their childbearing years. 
Symptoms are often misdiagnosed for years. Delay in treatment can cost someone you love their family or their life. The Lupus Foundation of America wants to end this by educating physicians as well as those people at risk. Please help. The answer is C. Welcome back to the RA facility Run here on the campus of SMSU where the Minnesota State Mavericks are uh, looking at their 21st victory here if they can uh, avoid Don't just win. avoid a miracle comeback. They're up 79 to 42 with four minutes, 57 seconds left to play. And Matt, uh, I, we said, we pretty much said uh, everything that uh, <laughs> we can say is just, uh, uh, just a struggling, uh, pretty much just uh, been a struggle bus for the Lady Mustangs here tonight. Yeah, pretty much. Um, like we said, turnovers, big part, 23 turnovers for the Lady Mustangs compared to five turnovers for the Minnesota State. Uh, Lady Mavericks, and it's, I mean, you got to give credit where, to what That's credits do. I mean, the Minnesota Lady, Minnesota State Lady Mavericks are um, really lighting up the scoreboard here tonight. Right at their season average for points, the Mavericks is 79 as Vanessa Rush uh, makes that first free throw. And again, don't forget, after this game, about a half hour after this game ends, uh, we'll have a SMSU men's basketball game against another tough uh, Minnesota State team. The men are pretty good as well. And a 30 second timeout called by Minnesota State. It's a, 30 second like we said, while we have a moment, let's talk a little more about that men's game coming up in a little, in a little bit. The Mustangs, I mean, just barely uh, survived <laughs> a uh, lesser team in Concordia St. Paul last night, 79 to 77 off another uh, uh, exhilarating fish finish, another game-winning shot by Bernard Birch, but uh, tonight they're going to need a, lo a little bit more than luck to defeat a, a really good uh, Minnesota State team that's right up at the top of the conference. Oh yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you look at the stats for them. I mean, a guy like uh, Terrell Clark, I mean, nine point three rebounds per game. That's second in the conference. That's a guy to look out for. There's a bunch of guys to look out for in this game coming up, like a, a C. Mare, um one heck of a player, 16 points per game for the, uh, um, Ma uh, excuse me, <laughs> the uh, Minnesota State uh, Mavericks. And then uh, you got, you know, Zach Monahan. He's got 15 points per game. He can pass the ball. He can shoot the three. So the Mustangs have got their work cut out for them. But it seems like the Mustangs can use their athleticism because it seems like they are a little more athletic than the Minnesota State Mavericks. So it's going to be an interesting matchup because we know the um, – our Mustangs can really get out there and take on, you know, nationally ranked teams. I mean, we saw, we played Winona here in the RA facility and uh, we uh, beat them. I mean, th th I mean, it's a, they're a beatable team, but they've got to, I mean, they got to be sound offensively and defensively and they got to uh, really uh, work on the, th uh, shooting the three. I mean, have confidence in their shot. And so that men's game coming up about a half hour after this game ends. As Lexi offers with another basket, getting close for, to double figures for her. She has nine on the night now. And it's 81 to 44, Minnesota State with the lead. Four and a half to play. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Mavericks. The Mavericks and Tyra Johnson Mavericks. checking back in for Bresnahan. And Snaz is gonna come back in, in for the Mustangs. The Mustangs Jesse Jesus Watts Emily. coming back out. Again, Watts and Emily Dusky each with four fouls. Dusky still on the court. Rush over to Sothoff. Sothoff driving. Now a pass to Dusky. Dusky has to kick it back out. Seven on the shot clock. Vanessa Rush pulls back, puts up the shot, no good. And nice hustle by Snaza to uh, throw the ball off a Minnesota State player. I wasn't sure if she'd be able to reach that ball in time, but the good hustle by Snaza, even though I mean, you hate to say it, but the game uh, uh, essentially over with a 37-point lead for the Mavericks. But uh, that might just earn Snaza a little more playing time, uh, seeing that hustle. The ball knocked out of bounds again, last touch by the Mavericks. Again, it doesn't get any, any easier for the Lady Mustangs. They'll be taking on number 17 Northern State at Northern on Wednesday to open up the conference tournament. And now actually they're gonna award the ball to the Mavericks. Four minutes and a second left. And 
a traveling violation on the Mavericks. It's just the sixth turnover of the game by Minnesota State. The Mustangs have only gotten uh, four points off those six turnovers. Snaza over to Nagel. Now Sadhoff with the ball. Pass into Snaza. Snaza got the ball uh, stripped, but she regains it. Now back out to Rush with 11 on the shot clock. Rush now driving a nice pass to Nagel, who is left wide open. And Allison Nagel with nine points. Delzado now pushing it up the court. Now Sherber with the shot. That's no good. Rebound by Rush. Again, the Mustangs got to be uh, in a uh, quick pace mode here if they want to cut this deficit. As Nagel goes up again, nails Allison another shot. Nagel. And now Allison Nagel in double figures with 11. And the deficit cut to 33 with three minutes left. Matt, the Mustangs going with that full court press, but the Mavericks able to break it fairly quickly. Exactly. I mean, you got to get some press out there. I mean, to uh, get this uh, Minnesota Lady Maverick team off balance, but I mean, obviously, it hasn't been working since uh, the beginning of the game. Tyra Johnson, Johnson with another basket. And, uh, Johnson with a, a good night tonight. She has 10 points. Now it's Naza over to Nagel. Now to Saha. Two and a half left to play now. As the pass, Sadoff tried to go inside, but another turnover by the Mustangs. And Sherber pushing it down court. Shot no good, but a foul. And so Brittany Sherber Let's will be going to the line. 11, Michaela Sadoff, her second personal foul. That was the second personal foul on Michaela Sadoff. Brittany Sherber at the line, shooting two. Brittany Sherber with Three points. She nailed a three pointer earlier in the first half. In for the Mavericks, number four now uh, Anna Lelocks coming in for the Mavericks. In for the Mustangs, 14, Seeing her Holland, first action. Jesse Watts, 23, Becca Rowling, 25. Jesse Anna Watts, Beeler. Rebecca Rowling, Hannah Beeler, and Bree Holloman coming back in for the Mustangs. Two for two on that trip for Brittany Sherber. That's now 85 to 48 for the Mavericks. You don't really see uh, too many, uh, we haven't re really seen too many games get into the 80s here of uh, broadcasting these uh, Lady Mustang basketball games. But like you said, Matt, one of the best offenses in the NSIC. It's a Holloman with a nice steal there. And Nagel Allison gets another basket. Nagel. That's 13 points for Nagel. And as you can see, Michael, the, all the seniors that uh, started this game are now out on the court. That looks like they're going to have a final adieu here at the RA facility. I mean, all ladies contributed so well uh, in their time here with the Mustangs. I mean, great. I mean, even though they didn't have the best seasons, they still work together as a team, and it's uh, good to see them going out with. Uh, hopefully, they can go out with a bang here. And Delzato with the Delzato. another basket, 87 to 50. A minute and a half to play. Rebecca rolling over to Holloman. Holloman puts it up and knocks it down. Free Holloman Gregory with 15 Holliman. points. But it's not going to be enough as a, it's just too much of a deficit as Delzato gets an easy basket. Sammy the Mustangs Delzato. fail to get back on defense. And I believe a timeout may have been called. Ladies and gentlemen, no, they're just making a, their final appearance at play, the RA facility. Play. Number 14, Bree Holloman, 21, Jesse Watts, 23, Becca Rowling, 25, Anna Beeler, and 45, Allison Nagel. As the Mustangs bring in five new players and the seniors that were on the court get a little bit of a, a standing ovation here at the RA facility. And again, like you said, Matt, a tough way to end it. Not just this season, but last season, uh, two straight years where the Mustangs have really struggled. Yeah, they really have. But I mean, what about this crowd though? They're really supporting uh, the Lady Mustangs. I mean, there's a lot of people out here. I mean, they obviously didn't uh, want to see them get blown out here at the RA facility, but it's good to see that they're still supporting them. And uh, um, hopefully, the Lady Mustangs can. I mean, I mean, that's what they've needed. I mean, they're hitting their threes right now. I mean, it's good to end. What good way to end uh, this uh, game here? 
Uh, Whitney Miller with the three there, but the M Mustangs struggle but once again to get back on defense. That foul on Miller on the other end. And again, Whitney Miller only a sophomore, but uh, she has struggled uh, staying healthy in her uh, few years here. So, I mean, if she can stay healthy, she'll be one of those players that Coach Kruger will be counting on the next uh, two or three years into the future. As uh, Anna Lelox misses that first free throw. Lelox out of uh, a sophomore out of Parker, South Dakota. And uh, misses that second free throw, but the ball knocked out of bounds by Emily Dusky again. Uh, just grab the ball and stop it from uh, getting out of bounds. But uh, Delzato gets the inbound pass, has to kick it out to Olsen. As the Mavericks can uh, just end the game here and ride out the clock on this possession. Sherber over to Johnson. Sherber starting to feel some of the pressure. But, uh, and that's going to be uh, over the back, but it's not going to matter as the Mavericks come into the RA facility, quiet this crowd, and uh, blow out the Mustangs. An 89 to 58 victory for the Lady Mavericks, who improved to 21 and 5 overall, 18 and 4 in the NSIC. The Mustangs finished the regular season four and 22 overall, two and 20 in conference play. And so what we will do is we will take a 60 second break. When we come back, we will wrap up this game with stats and uh, give a little preview of the SMSU men's game. So stay tuned, we'll be back in 60 seconds. You're watching Mustang basketball right here on KSSU TV. Your heart rate's a little fast. Cause of death, acute myocardial infarction. Have you tried a weight loss program? Likely caused by type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Still smoking? Victim's lungs are black and scarred. You can get a physical exam now. Or you can get one later. Use our free risk calculator and talk to your doctor. Lower your risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease and live a healthier life. What's it like when you hear your calling? Will you ignore it? Or will you listen? What if it calls you to go halfway around the world? To serve people you've never met? What will you do when you hear your calling? Peace Corps, life is calling. How far will you go? Welcome back to the RA facility where the Mustangs lose a tough one, 89 to 58 over a really good Minnesota State uh, team. Michael Sterling here with Matt Callahan. And Matt's a, you know, 18 first half turnovers is a hard thing to recover from. And uh, they took the care of the ball a little better in the second half. But again, it's uh, tough to overcome those kind of mistakes in the first half. And so uh, taking a look at some of the stats, why don't you tell us what uh, made a big difference here in this game? Well, there are a lot of things that really made a difference in this game, Michael. I, I mean, we got to look at this. I mean, outstanding play by the Minnesota State uh, Lady Mavericks. They had 47 bench points. I mean, that's that's one heck of a bench they got there uh, for the Mavericks. And then uh, you look at points in the paint. They had 34 points in the paint compared to 20 to the Lady Mustangs. And uh, points off turnovers was a, was a huge thing in this game. 28 points off turnovers for Minnesota State. And... Um, just one of the bright spots for uh, the Mustangs, really, was their field goal percentage was a little low. Want to get that up a little bit. Uh, they did out-rebound the Lady Mavericks, but, I mean, other than that, I mean, Lady, Lady Mustangs didn't really have anything to get really hyped about, and, you know, it's a tough way to see them lose, you know, for the seniors and stuff, and it, it's been a tough season, but, I mean, they got one more... They got a couple more games. Hopefully they have a couple more games, actually, against Northern State on Wednesday, and that's at Northern State. So we'll see what happens in that game. But we look at this Minnesota State team, and they're going to be very good in the turn, uh, the conference tournament as well as the national tournament. So um, it's going to be entertaining to see what happens uh, coming up for the uh, Minnesota State Lady Mavericks and Lady Mustangs. Let's see if they can get on a little bit of a roll here. Hopefully they can, but uh, if they play like the, the way they did tonight, um, 
I don't know, they might be knocked out uh, against Northern State. Well, we've seen some strange things in the sporting world, so I mean, one never knows, but again, it is a, a tough first draw for the Lady Mustangs. Again, they lose a tough game on senior night, 89 to 58. So that'll do it for our coverage for SMSU ladies basketball. Coming up, about 18 minutes away from our pregame for SMSU men's basketball, another tough game against a really good uh, Maverick men's squad. But there are our Mustang men, they're pretty good too. Coming off a, a, a thrilling victory, 79-77 over Concordia St. Paul last night. But the, we'll see how they respond after uh, such a thrilling game here tonight. So we will step aside, take a little bit of a break. But we will come back in a little bit and have the pregame for SMSU men's basketball. Stay tuned. You're watching Mustang basketball right here on KSSU TV.